Ebullient greetings. I'm your host, Jackie Bird of Jackie Bird Spiritual Wellness, your guide to stress and anxiety relief, mindfulness, awareness, self-care, self-love, and personal growth. Welcome and thank you for joining me as we roll with peace in mind. Today's riff is Soothe Thyself, Gemstones and Crystals for Stress Relief. I'm going to tell you a story, and it is a true story. There once was a lad who was a friend of mine who could care less for the magic of crystals and stones. But oh ho, I had created a necklace, you see, for calming and soothing the intensity. Now this friend was a sweetheart, so kind-hearted was he, to invite me to hang out all of my jewelry. He would cook up a storm in his tiny restaurant, but said, hey, young girly, bring your jewelry and more. Now that necklace I told you, so soothing and calm, he'd look at intently each time he walked by, had me thinking, perhaps for a gift, that this has his eye for a person he respected and talked about often for after all. It was holiday time. This dance continued for the next few days. Me thinks, okay, his decision he'll say. And then, aha, one day his walking stopped right in front of the necklace. Staring more intently than all the days before, lo and behold, he took said necklace right off its stand and plopped it around his neck. So shocked was I, just peeped up, popped out. So surprised by his sudden action, there was nothing I saw in the days before that prepped me for this pleasant attraction. And in an instant he said, I'll take it. And a barrage of words fluttered out of my mouth. These stones are cut off was I due to the look of disinterest in his eyes. Just wrapped it up, they seemed to say. I don't have time for any foolishness. Now get to it before I change my mind. So I swallowed up my info and wrapped the necklace up tight, secretly filled with intense delight. Ah, it's okay if he doesn't know. My jewel gems will work on him though. A week went by, then two, then three. The day of comments came in a month's guarantee. He gazed at me in wonder. His words flowed through. Like, what happens when what you think something is not, but it shows you, yes, it's true. He said, I notice when I don't wear that necklace. I'm more hyper. I wasn't sure at first, so I took it off on purpose, left it off for a few days. Then I put it back on. Yup, much more calm when it's on. So tickled was I with a knowing smile, a glint of glee in mine eye for he, for now he was ready, ready to know what kind of gem magic was in that necklace with the power to quell even his own antics. I created that necklace with rose quartz and lapidolite, which has lithium in it. Both are calming, soothing gemstones, and they're adorned with copper, which has the elements of conduction and amplification. He smiled, we smiled. What a happy ending. <laughs> Welcome to the world of gemstones and crystals, y'all. And hey, look, I work with lots and lots of children, so I couldn't resist telling this true tale in the form of a fairy tale. Matter of fact, I wrote this the same day I had worked with a group of uh, three and four-year-olds. So hey, what can I say? But anyway, truly, I was so happy my friends shared this information with me. It's one thing to know something for yourself, 
but when someone who has absolutely no interest at all in the properties of crystals and gemstones, but ends up experiencing them anyway, I mean, that's just too cool. It made a believer out of him. So if you're a skeptic, but are stressed to the nines, consider giving gemstones and crystals a try <laughs> to help you alleviate your stress. If for nothing else, that they're pretty and gazing at them can really chill you out. And if you are curious about the use of gemstones for stress relief or are already an evolving convert, here is a short list of portable soothing in crystal form. Lipidolite. Sometimes this purple gemstone gets confused with amethyst. Keywords of this lithium bearing stone are emotional balance, stress relief, and a relaxation. It's called a stone of serenity. Number two. Oh, and these are not in any particular order. Number two, I have rose quartz, which is a very popular crystal. It comes in opaque and translucent form. Polished or raw, you can't go wrong with this one. And just recently, I gave one to a young lady. She was experiencing menstrual cramps. And they are also the bomb diggity for hot flashes. With the menstrual cramps, it helped relieve her pain. In addition to breathing and just sitting still for a moment. And I also showed her a couple of positions that you can uh, lay on the floor with that help tip your pelvis. So those are all good things to put together if you're dealing with menstrual cramps. Anywho, the key words for rose quartz, love, gentleness, release of stress. You know, and I think just staring at the color of this soothing crystal can chill you out for, for true, for true. It's called the stone of love for all. The vibes are mellow and it's said it can help to dissolve anger. So that's a really handy one to have with you. Number three, Celestite or Celestite. I'm not really sure how people pronounce it. I say Celestite and I love the stone. It comes in a few colors such as white, gray, green, yellow, orange, reddish, brown, or colorless. The most common color on the market is, is a bluish gray and that's what I have. When I hold and behold this blue gray crystal, I feel the calm wash over me and it is such a beautiful color. I mean, it's amazing. I also love the feel of the geodes. The underside is way cool too. The key words are serenity and access to higher guidance. So I've seen it primarily in geode form and um, sometimes I see uh, separate crystals. Number four, pink tourmaline. It's another heart stone like rose quartz and heart stone meaning the heart chakra, the fourth chakra, which is basically exactly where your heart is. So pink tourmaline is a heart stone like rose quartz. The key words are love and emotional healing, said to help heal the auric field, your aura, from emotional wounds. Number five, I have pink calcite. I feel about this gemstone like I do about rose quartz. Just gazing at the milky pink is soothing in and of itself as a meditation. And there are two types, the opaque and the transparent, which I understand have slightly different properties. The opaque version is said to help calm hysteria and despair. Keywords, well-being, empathy, and wholeness. It's also called mangano calcite. And again, that's another word. I don't know how people in the industry pronounce it. I guess you can say mangano or mangano. I don't know. I say mangano calcite. So number six is another beautiful stone. It's called Larimar, and it's only found on the island of Hispanola. I first became enchanted with this gemstone while in the Dominican Republic. The blue is unlike any I have seen, and it is said to be the stone of Atlantis. It is a very difficult and dangerous stone to get, so it is pricey. The key words are calming, 
soothing, and cooling. Sounds like a recipe for stress relief to me. Number seven, I had blue lace agate. Said to calm the emotions as well as imparting clarity, confidence, and communication. A lot of stress comes from not being able to express oneself clearly or at all. Agates are basically grounding, stabilizing, and strengthening gemstones. And when one is stressed out, you feel anything but grounded, stable, or strong. So that's a goodie to have. Number eight, Amazonite, called a stone of harmony for within the self and the others. This is also a heart uh, chakra stone. And um, little side note, Amazonite is an amazing stone. And I used this to help me when I was dealing with eczema. Woo! Keywords, truth, communication, and harmony. Attributed with stimulating the heart and throat chakras, enabling one to speak from the heart without the confusing clouds of emotions. This blue-green stone is also said to assist with the manifestation of dreams and desires. Woo, Amazonite, yeah. Number nine, I have Jade. The keywords, health, abundance. Green is said to be the most common color there is. Look at how being among trees and nature makes us feel, unless you have allergies, of course. It is said that these stones are great to wear during sleep for their nourishing vibrations. It is also said to imbue the auric field with the earth's life force energy. Woo, jade. And there's a couple of types of jade too. And be careful if you do look for jade, you want to make sure, find out where it's from because there are um, some fabrications of this stone. So you want to go to a reputable stone merchant, somebody that knows their stuff and they get quality gemstones and crystals. So this is just the short list. These are the stones that I have used, like to use, and um, a good deal of the information I reference here is from the Book of Stones and it is my favorite book on crystals and gemstones. It's by Robert Simmons and again, I don't know how she pronounces her name, Naisha Ashian. What's really cool, and it took me a minute to catch this, is her first and last name are the same, except backwards. Really cool. I would imagine Ashian maybe not her real name. Anyway, I digress. It's a great resource for in-depth info accompanied by gorgeous photographs of the stones. And while you can certainly purchase gemstones and crystals on the web. For first timers, I recommend you purchase them in person from people that have a great amount of knowledge to answer any of your questions. And as I said earlier, that they get really top rate product. Once you have your stones, wash them in lukewarm water and let them dry. Now, that's the other thing that is confusing. People have all kinds of things that they say you should do with stones, put them in rice, charge them by the full moon, turn around four times. I am always one that feels, and I'm not going to say, you know, don't do that. If that feels like it's right for you to do, then do it. I am from the school that less is more. These things have been in the earth for millions and millions and millions of years. And my feeling is they don't need your help you need theirs. <laughs> so anyway, like I said, whatever feels right to you. I, as I said earlier, I like to just put them in water, lukewarm water and let them dry. Sit with them when you are ready for bed, holding it as you sit still, quiet, breathing in slowly and out. I know you've been practicing and, and working on getting yourself grounded and centered before you go to bed. Hint, hint. Hold the stone, sit quietly, breathing in and out, allowing the stone to help bring you into balance as you gaze into it. And you know, you may feel nothing, that's okay. What you want to do is just slow your roll, breathe and quiet your mind. And so, you know, carry the stone with you, hold it, you know, in your pocket or your bag, 
And when your stress levels begin to go, hold on to the stone or the pouch. Just hold on to it and make sure you take nice deep breaths as you hold that stone. So I've listed these stones as choices to get started, but above all, go to what speaks to you. Because as I have witnessed time and time again, your gut always takes you to what you need. And on that note, I will take you into a guided meditation. Before we begin, if you have a gemstone or crystal or anything that reminds you to slow down and ground, go ahead and get it. And once you have it, sit or lie down in a comfortable position. Get yourself settled and hold your object in your left hand with your palm up. If you have more than one stone, hold it in the other hand as well with the palm facing up. Make sure your spine is nice and straight and tall and begin to just notice your normal breathing. As you begin to draw your attention to the sound of the breath coming in and the breath going out, you will begin to slow that down, moving into taking conscious breaths inward and outward. Breathing in on the count of four. One, two, three, four. And breathe out. Two, three, four. Repeat. Breathe in. Two, three, and out. Repeating. And one. And out. Continue breathing, slow in-breath, slow out-breath on your own time, listening to the sound of the air rushing in and the air rushing out. Note as you breathe that there is a slight pause between each in-breath and each out-breath. And as you continue to breathe, shift your focus to the stone or stones. Take note of the color. Take note of the size. Take note of the shape. Just handle the stone slowly. Breathing in here, one, two, three, and breathing out. And as you're doing this, we're looking at that stone in your hand. Or whatever object you've chosen, 
as your soothing reminder. Breathe on your own time, still looking at it. the stone or stones in your hand. Your reminder to breathe. Your reminder to be calm. Your reminder to let go. Your reminder to align with your inner self. May the stone always remind you to come back to center. I hope our time together was soothing, relaxing, and illuminating for you. I welcome your comments and questions here or on social media. Be sure to tag Jackie Bird Spiritual Wellness for a chance to have your comments read on a future episode. And to deepen your meditation experience with me, go to JackieBirdSpiritualWellness.com where you will find ebooks on stress relief, mindfulness, and personal growth. You can also book a Stress Busters guided meditation session. And if you dig the talk segment, Guided Meditation, the music in this episode, those tracks are available on JackieBirdSpiritualWellness.com also. In the meantime, thank you for listening and remember to roll with peace in mind.